Hey guys, how y'all doing? My name is Teo Natty. Welcome to my channel. I've been uploading content here on YouTube for about a year now, but I didn't start uploading regularly until the beginning of this year. However, I've been lurking behind the scenes watching all types of different YouTube videos ever since I was a teenager. Speaking of teenagers, I have a younger sister and just like me, she also likes to watch a lot of YouTube videos. Now, I don't live with my family anymore, but from time to time, pre-COVID, we would see each other and I'd get to catch up with her. We'd very often bond over our appreciation of contemporary hip-hop music, but also sharing the different YouTubers that we watch and seeing if we follow any of the same ones. It feels like every single time we had these types of conversations, she would ask me if I watched David Dobrik's vlogs. And it feels like every single time, my answer would be something along the lines of, nah, I don't really vibe with that type of content. My sister would often try to tell me why she finds the videos entertaining, and it was basically due to the happy family vibe that the vlog squad portrayed to their audience. Nothing that she or any of the other millions of teenagers that watch those videos are to be blamed for, honestly. Today, I'm not here to recount all the allegations against David Dobrik and the vlog squad because frankly, there are plenty of quality videos out there created by great YouTubers that can provide that information for you. So if you don't know what happened, pause this video, go find out, and then come back. I am here to talk about that weird gut feeling that I always had in relation to David Dobrik, his content, and his crew. Now, here's the thing. I'm very much an adept of the concept that before you make a judgment on someone's work, you should give it a try you know watch it well I didn't do that when it comes to the vlog squad and I'm not about to I can't lie my sister did show me a few clips from vlogs here and there I remember seeing something along the lines of a birthday party a bunch of hats and hearing a lot of yelling the energy was so chaotic in their vlogs and to me loud does not equal funny so honestly there was nothing that really captivated me about his videos like I said before though I completely understand why a lot of teenagers are drawn to that type of content Here's the thing, I remember when David Dobrik was just some guy on Vine and I didn't really like his Vines so I didn't follow his content over to YouTube when he switched over and started gaining a ton more popularity. And to be honest with you, just hearing the screaming and the yelling in the videos that my sister was watching was enough to put me into an existential crisis. So in order to continue performing the Bailey Dasic, Bailey Dasic, the basic daily things that I have to do in order to survive, I downplayed the gross feeling that I had in relation to David Dobrik and his vlogs to him simply being an obnoxious dude with huge money and lots of ego. Or was it the other way around? But in the light of recent discoveries, it turns out that there was more to the bad gut feeling I had about him and the vlog squad. And if you don't know what happened, well, like I said, pause and find out and then come back. But to think that I was simply too annoyed at David Dobrik and his friend's obnoxiousness to dive deeper into their content like the sh I would have found, his career would have ended years ago. But what's done is done, there's no way to reverse time, and the only thing I can do is learn from my mistakes and get in the habit of thanking my gut and my instincts for letting me know when something's up, because more often than not, they have been right. Now look, I know to you it may seem like I'm just trying to sound like that person that's like, I knew it, I told you so. Like, Teo Natty, who the f*** are you? I've never heard of you. Well, like I said, I've been lurking for a long time behind the scenes, and this year is the year that I'm finally using my voice to speak on the things that I ruminate about. And I've been editing a lot of videos lately, so needless to say, I've had a lot of time to watch the whole David Dobrik situation unfold right in front of my eyes. At first, I was absolutely heartbroken for the people that have suffered, and then I was just so shocked at how everything was just there in plain sight, all in the good old vlogs. Like I said, if I would have dived deeper into the vlog squad myself before certain events were brought to light, I feel like I would have been able to give my sister a definite answer to the question. Do you watch David Dobrik? No, I think they're a bunch of slimy guys with too much money and absolutely no respect for other people. So aside from my heart going out to the victims, I wanted to make a video to express my thoughts on how despite never verbalizing it, I always felt like there was something off about the vlog squad and I never wanted to watch their videos despite their popularity. And now the fact that I know that so many horrible things were recorded on those vlogs and watched by millions of teenagers, while there were probably so many other people like you and I out there that would have been so enraged at the things that we are seeing happen but maybe we never watched the content because it either seemed too obnoxious or maybe we downplayed certain things we saw to I don't know foolishness and loudness well that just makes me angry and I'm not saying we should raid everyone that's super famous right now and try to find things from their past 
podcast to try and drag their name through the mud for it. Obviously, nobody in this world has time to watch content they do not enjoy just in the hopes of finding something to cancel someone for. And if you do, that's a choice. We should also not be canceling people for petty things, okay? Only for serious and harmful things that endanger other beings. Otherwise, we're not going to achieve anything except make the world a messier place than it already is. However, I think it's safe to say that in the light of recent events, it's a good idea to trust your gut when it comes to the way that you feel about certain YouTubers because more often than not, your instincts can tell you a lot more than you think. And we've seen over and over again, there are so many YouTubers that have achieved a huge level of success off the views of teenagers that can't quite fully tell right from wrong yet and it's because of that that these youtubers go on for such a long time doing all sorts of dangerous things more often than not involving minors the same teenagers that watch them and not facing any repercussions until the years go by and a lot more people are affected and I've single-handedly contributed to this problem and I feel terrible about it but I know that I can't blame myself too much for it at the end of the day. As a teenage girl, some of my favorite YouTubers were Shane Dawson and Destry Smith, both of whom have recently been expulsed from the YouTube community indefinitely due to the terrible things they have done. Even though I enjoyed their edgy jokes as a wee teenager, once I was out of high school, I stopped watching their content unless it was specific videos that triggered a sort of nostalgia in me. I just didn't find their content amusing and entertaining anymore whereas I could have laughed for hours back in the day at Destry being quirky and Shane being Shane. But yeah, if this proves anything is that and I no 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 just wait a little bit. But yeah, if this proves anything and I mean this with love is that teenagers brains are just not fully developed yet to the point where they can truly discern what is right from wrong and the gut feeling I've been ranting on and on about in this video is not something that many teenagers experience unless maybe in a state of actual physical danger when you're a kid watching someone be entertaining on your phone screen because you need a break from your stressful and angsty teenage life you're not watching that content with the same mindset that an adult with a fully developed sense of the world does so all in all my message to the YouTube community especially the people that have been around for a while either on the youtube stage or behind the scenes like myself we've just seen so many different people come and go on this platform we've seen people go from just being another face in the crowd to being put on a golden pedestal and showered with sponsorships and brand deals we've seen youtubers make mistakes some that are really grave and others that are not so grave and we've also seen the apology videos for those mistakes whether we personally deemed them good or bad we've seen a lot happen on this platform and it's been proven over and over again that the massive numbers all the millions of subscribers that somebody has it doesn't mean a thing once the dark things from their past are brought to light i'm not saying that we should have a neighborhood watch i'm not saying that we should have a youtube neighborhood I'm not saying we should have a YouTube neighborhood watch or anything like that, okay? But we need to realize that the past was once the present and it was happening in the same moments that we were living and breathing in too. I know, mind-bending, truly revelational. But seriously, perhaps so many things that went wrong with the vlog squad could have been stopped if we just all trusted our gut a little bit more and looked a little bit deeper into the things that made us feel kind of gross on the inside for whatever reason. As I said before, there is nothing that can be done to turn back time and my heart is truly with everyone that's gone through traumatic things at the hands of the infamous vlog director David Dobrik. Anyway, lots of unexpected and yet easily foreseeable things happening in 2021 and I think that the most important thing we can learn about this situation with David Dobrik and the vlog squad is that we need to trust our gut instincts a little bit more when it comes to YouTubers and we need to try and break the cycle of putting potentially harmful and dangerous people up on a pedestal just because millions of teenagers give them their views. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I know this is kind of different. I usually only talk about personal topics, but this whole situation really struck a chord within me and my personal topics. So I just had to talk about it because I've been absorbing all of the information and not really having anyone to talk to it about. And I didn't want to just like regurgitate everything that happened. And I think this is the bigger 
takeaway that we can take from the situation. So thank you so much for listening to me and hearing out my thoughts. It honestly means the world to me. If you liked what I had to say, give this video a like and maybe subscribe to my channel so you can see what else I have to say in the future. I don't know. Um, yeah, thank you so much, you guys. I love you. Stay safe. Take care. All that good stuff. I have to come up with like a catchy intro outro. Okay, bye.